My name is Chichi Eriobu. I am the founder and CEO of Fronesis Foods, Nigeria Limited. Um, we are a food processing and packaging company in Lagos, Nigeria. Hey, it's Kellen, and today on Diversified Game, all the way from Nigeria, I have Miss Chi Chi, and she is a connection that we got, like we get many connections, people, from how we made it in Africa. We saw her story on there. I said, wait, a woman taking over not just the Nigerian food industry with the African food, but going global with it. Because Miss Chi Chi, welcome to the show. We are thirsty for all <laughs> the African food we can get here in America. You know, to, yeah. To, we're thirsty for it to find the proper cassava. Um, my wife is from Cameroon. She's like, go find me some a rule. I said, I'll try nice. to go find some a rule. Let me go find it. So welcome to the show. I just wanted you to come on and give people the game. Tell them about your company and, you know, how we can order um, your foods globally. Okay. Um. So Fronesis Foods is a food processing and packaging company located in Lagos, Nigeria. Um, however, we have um, operational bases uh, in the eastern part of Nigeria as well, in Anambra, in uh, Imo State, in Abuja, in Harcourt, in Enugu. Um, it's interesting because um, what we are dealing on is um, we are packaging Nigeria's local food and we are creating multiple food product lines from them. So we are doing this one raw material at a time. So we kicked off um, officially in 2018. Amazingly, the product I kicked off with is a product that my mother had retailed as um, a food product retailer for more than 35 years, but it was just um, retailing it down there in the open market to everyday consumers. So when I was thinking of, um, uh, doing something that initially I it wasn't like I planned out a food processing company. I wanted to build a company that how we would have the capacity to employ quite a number of people, especially women in the rural communities. So it had to be something that people go to every day, that people require every day, that people patronize every now and then. And so um, we began initially. We began by just. Um, packaging dried okwa. Okwa is the name of the local food. The English name is breadfruit or what you find on the internet as African breadfruit. So initially we just began to dehydrate them and pack them for retail purposes and for wholesale purposes. But as the market grew, there is another version of it that we, we reinvented, which was the toasted one that you do usually find in the local markets, toasted and palm kernel. So we rebranded to toasted and coconut flakes. Uh, however, that was just what people, those two were just what people were used to. And then as the time uh, grew, we began to uh, research more what we could do with this product. It is rich in fiber, rich in protein, uh, unsaturated fat, carbohydrates, and the rest of them. So we're thinking what more we could do with this product, considering the nutritional value. It's healthy for a diabetic, for kids, uh, helps to rejuvenate the skin and the rest of that. So we created the one called Okwa Pounder. Okwa Pounder is like the solid kind of food that if you know Nigerian food, you know you most likely have heard about fufu or semo or amala, the rest of them. So we created something in that we wanted to give because we discovered that seven at least, at least seven out of 10 Nigerians eat swallow or solid food on a daily basis. So but what more um, is more beautiful than eating uh, solid food that is not just solid food, but it's also very healthy. So you can eat as much as you want. So we created the pound though that's, that's currently like our cash cow because it's new and it's only our company that is doing it. And then we created just this morning, we tasted out um, okwa flour with baking and we baked cookies just from uh, African breakfast flour. It's delicious. 
But other than the Poundo and the other two products, we made um, smoothies uh, from Okwa, uh, from African breadfruit floor. And then we made them, um, we have, the way you have a uh, peanut bar, uh, we made Okwa bar, uh, Okwa protein bar. These are some of the products that are currently yet to hit the market. And so it's been amazing um, structuring from the scratch. Sometimes it's quite hard building a business from the scratch. But one of the things with um, our motive with creating multiple food product lines from one raw material at a time is that we want to get into China and see Nigerian food products and see our food products. We want to, um, the way you come down here, you see Chinese restaurants, you see this kind of restaurants that are not exactly Nigerian foods. We want to get into China, get into Germany, get into Australia, get into different countries or continents and find uh, African local food products or Nigerian local food products on their shelves in the restaurants being patronized by the national, not just even Nigerians in those countries. And it's been amazing doing all of that because in 2019, we got our first international ship with United, Boston, United States. And that was how we kicked off from Boston. We got into Scotland and then we got into London with a new retailer. And then currently we are in Australia, which happens to be our largest market. This is aside from Nigeria. Yeah. Wow. That's that the way you laid that out. And I want people to know it's not easy. You nah, and your- it's not. <laughs> you did a lot to get here, even giving some equity in your company I, when I was reading online, just to, you know, fulfill this, this dream, because you had a goal in mind. Um, I, I want people to know that because sometimes when foreigners now are awakening and seeing what um, I'm calling the new Nigeria, they're watching it on Netflix and they're seeing Lakey and Victoria <laughs> and they're saying, oh, of course, Chi Chi, she, you know, Rachel, she, <laughs> she has the night and it's like, hold on. She what did start off as an entrepreneur. I mean, you had many a jobs when researching. So what do you think um, pushed you? Because I would only imagine people probably thought you were crazy. They said, you're mad. Just go get a job. Just stay and go with, you know, what everybody else is doing. So what pushed you to, like, make all this happen? Um, Cullen, uh, let me say first thing first. Um, we haven't signed up an equity investor yet. We are currently discussing that. Uh, ah. Some of the workings that we have had um, had some vision that is a bit different from what we're running but we have um, our visions is set in short, short forms. Five years, this is what we want to do. After five years, then we increase that. That's how we're currently running. So we're currently negotiating new partners. Uh, after this meeting, there is another meeting by 6 p.m. with new partners and their new investors. So having said that, um, when I kicked off in 2000, first of all, before we launched Foodie in 2018, between 2016 and early first quarter of 2018, we did some sort of market test that market testing opened my eyes to a lot of things. In fact, that market testing was literally like modeling out the business and see how it was going to do in the market. And we failed woefully with that because I got a lot of things wrong. Aside the fact that I was the sole employer or employee, I was the employer and the employee of the company. No staff. I was the HR. I was the accountant. I was the delivery person. I was everything. So it was crazy and we have jammed up numbers that are not, we can't even present it to anyone. So all of that accumulated to, um, we shutting down, or me shutting down quite early in 2018 and thinking that, okay, I need to sit back now. If we have to launch fully, we have to look at it again. But I remember that between this period that we were more than quite a number of people, even people very close to me looked at me and said, oh, is Uka business you're going to make money or make your something out of yourself. Oh, uh, my grandmother had a pot tree at the back of their house. Nobody's going to buy from you. Oh, this and that. So there would, would every every entrepreneur always have these unbelievers at the start of, of a business. I'm at, at least right now, and I am granting interview to Kellen, uh, quite a number of people are going to listen to it and say, oh, girl, I'm proud of you. You were not proud of me at some point in my time. So we already understood that that's part of the journey. So yeah. So, but then it wasn't always easy. This is a business that we picked up after we, we, we took break early 2018. Uh, the only thing we were able to do was to at least incorporate the company because I know deep down within me that this was something I wanted to do, but I wanted to do it right. 
So we incorporated the company, a limited liability company, everything I had done from the beginning, I am thinking about the next 50 to 100 years of the business. So we incorporated, I knew I was going to have a point where I would in, bring investors on board and the rest of that. So when we incorporated, late 2018, we won 800,000 Naira grants. That's at like barely $100 now. We won 100,000 Naira grant. That's about uh, between August, September. So by October, we kicked off again. And then by uh, end of 2019 business year, we had tripled or more than tripled or whatever it is, we've had 100,000 Naira to revenue in millions of Naira. Now, it's interesting because um, I proved to a lot of people that you could actually retail this particular product and make money. When I started, there were like barely two or three people selling dried packaged open. Now you get on to, inter, uh, to Instagram and then you put a particular hashtag and whoop, you see every single one of them. So, and then I, I keep telling my team, I said, the difference between us and every other vendor is that we are focused on a particular product niche. So every other uh, maybe competitor or vendor that also sells over also sells over as one of their products. So they have rice, they have beans, they have the rest of that. But focusing on one raw material is why we are able to come up with multiple product lines from that one raw material, right? So also, I had failed a lot of times before I eventually did the program. I mean, I, I don't think there's any entrepreneur who initially you know, just got into the space and began to excel. I think that at some point in time, you're going to look back and realize that we've been product of multiple failures because this was not the first business I was starting, but this is only one that is doing well. There, I had done event planning. I had, I had retailed VTU um, airtime sales. I had, um, I, I had done hotel amenities supply. All of those didn't do well. However, I remember when I eventually made a decision to go into Upa business. And I remember sitting in my room at some point and I was having a conversation between me and God. And it was a case of, is there something more I haven't tried and I, I should try? You know, it, it, I was sitting there quiet and it's as real as me and you having this conversation. And then you said, well, you haven't tried Upa, your mother's business. And that sounds like that's like Upa, my mother's business. I mean, how am I going to start? I mean, it's, it's her business. It's not my business. And then he said, there is a lot of market gaps, which you know already you can start with that. And that was what we did. And you know, one thing with every idea, it never always fully comes out formed. It comes like a flicker of light. And if you can just take advantage of that, um, it's like to whom more, when something has been given to you and you act on it, more it would be given to you. That's just basically what happens with us. So, but I can tell you for sure, I am at a stage where people who read interviews, uh, like how we made it in Africa, called me and say, girl, I'm proud of you. Yeah, we worked to get here. <laughs> we worked to get here. <laughs> well, too much is given, much is required. Many people forget and that so, part. Yeah. yeah. You, you know, and, and you need to be responsible, unlike the one who takes his talons and just sticks it in the dirt after he gets it while others invest. Um, You've definitely invested. Can you tell somebody, whether they're in, you know, Lagos, Abuja, Cameroon, or the U.S., Canada, how did you first starting to get the, the money? Because what you're talking about when you put a process together, it takes mm -hmm. a lot of money and time. Mm -hmm. And you, you've probably messed up many batches saying we have to throw all of yeah. this out. So how did yeah. you, you know, having a job, like get that money was it friends and family at all or was it all savings um it was a, a grant the hundred thousand dollar we kicked off with was a grant money um however what happened between the time was when we did the modeling out we had an angel investor give us even something that was more than that money i had attended an event and then um, I moderated a panel session where we're talking about entrepreneurship and business funding. And there is this young guy in the panel session. And then we, we met up and I shared my idea. Then it was just an idea. And he said, okay, cool. I like what you're doing. I'm just going to give you a store amount of money. I didn't know anything about business. I didn't know anything about numbers, about raising funding or even uh, conception or execution of idea. I know nothing. Uh, I said all of that to say this because um, the spin off from that arrangement with that angel investor taught me quite a lot. Um, even though we failed, 
uh, the company was not registered at the time. And he didn't want to, even though I had a, a company name, he didn't want to um, go into that agreement with a company, uh, with the company he wasn't sure. Because a lot of times when angel investors are giving you money, it's like taking a, a risk on you. They knew like like 80 or more than 80% at the time that you're not going to do well. I mean, it's your first time. They like literally knew you were going to flop as they were waiting for it. So I think that was the experience. But however, when that ended, we kicked off with the 100,000 Naira grant. What happened was, anyway, that at the point of pitching for that 100,000 Naira grant, I had pitched my idea to an accountant, someone I wanted to bring on board the company because I didn't know so much about business accounting and numbers. So I knew that if I was going to win that grant opportunity, I needed to focus on the part of the business that I was good with, which is the products and the product creation and the rest of that. And then I would bring this accountant who I had pitched to, who is now a member of the team, to come and talk about our numbers and our projections. And that was how we won the 100,000 Naira grant. I think there were about 10 of us that won that funding. And that was how we kicked off. Um, one of the things that also helped was because at that initial stage, because my mother was also retailing fresh okra seeds, um, she was, it was easy for me to go back to her. She taught me things about pricing. She taught me about storage process, even though she wasn't that educated, but this is something she had done for more than 35 years. It just made a lot of sense that I leveraged whatever knowledge she had. And um, one of the things that also helped us was that um, if we had 100,000 Naira and we needed to buy products more than that, I could just pay her, say, 50,000 Naira, for instance. I said, okay, give us more. And when we sell, we return the money to you. So that was how I built trust with my mother. She was our first initial major and only supplier at the time. Now we have tons of them scattered across the eastern states of Nigeria. Um, one of the things that also helped our growth was social media. I would never be able to share how we grew, how we even got here in the first place without mentioning social media. Our first ever customer came to us, um, but uh, I, I moderated another event. And at that event, I mentioned that, okay, when I am not um, holding my phone, I am selling Ufa. And I didn't know there was someone in the crowd that was going to be interested. And two days later or the next day, and she called me up and said, oh, Ufa is my husband's favorite meal I'd like to buy from you. And then she bought, she enjoyed it. And she gave a review, extremely important, a review of satisfaction on Facebook. And that review was all we needed to go. Because from that review, we got like two new customers. And from two new customers, we got a first customer in uh, New York. Uh, from that, the rest is history. Okay. You know, and I was curious because when I <laughs> first saw the it pop up, I said, oh, cool. I said, wait. That's my favorite <laughs> actor in Kim Owa. What is what is she doing with him, or what? Is, you know, what is she um, preparing? Um, you know who I'm talking about, right? A Sophia. Yes. You know, many people just knew him when it first came out because of the original movies. Um, I, I, I'm letting you know right now, I'm the biggest collector of Nigerian <laughs> movies. So uh, I, I, I have them all, hundreds and hundreds, um, till it gets on my wife's nerves. Sometimes it takes up space, but you know, you took that little seed and you grew it being faithful. How did you take it all the way to Australia? What connection did you have in <laughs> Australia to get it all the way there? Listen, Kellen, the story is the, is, is the same everywhere. Um, first of all, we discovered <clears throat> the key customer complaint were accessibility and quality of product. That what of what they usually would get in the open market. So we created a storage process first to ensure all year round availability because it's the seasonal food product. So we know that if we have to have it all year round and be able to sell at the same price that we can sell when it's in season, we have to build a storage um, system. And that's what we first did. Now, the second stage was tackling the major customer complaint, which is quality. And by quality, uh, we get to, um, there were com customer complaints that said there were sands, there were tiny stones because the seed bed is as tiny as um, that is uh, maybe a bit bigger, not maybe a bit bigger than a rice seed, the same size with a bean seed, something like that. And so we created a five stage storage um, uh, selection process in house, five, five stage, 
where we move from point A selection process to point B selection process to point, each is to ensure excellent quality product. Each to, is, is to ensure zero sand, zero tiny stores, zero customer complaint. And so that was how we moved. Now our first distributor came to us via Instagram. Another customer had bought a product and enjoyed it and wrote a review on Instagram. And this young man in Boston said, oh, I've been looking for Upa. And I'm sure there are many other people in Boston, many other people in Boston that are also looking for Upa. I would love to distribute. I said, okay, cool. And within 48 hours, we closed our biggest sale. That was in 2019 at that point in time. And then it's amazing because come to think of it, every distributor and retailer that we currently have came via social media. Instagram or Facebook. The young lady that is retailing our product in London came to us via Instagram. The person that is retailing our product in, uh, in uh, Scotland came to us via Facebook. Australia too. Us, the biggest distributor we currently have is Australia. And she came to me via Facebook. She even saw my comment on someone else's post and she saw people saying nice things about me. That's another part of entrepreneurship. People do not um, they, uh, do not think about building your personal brand as an individual separate from the business because people see you first before they see the business. So I, I tried to build my personal brand. And one of the things I also did was I continued to share our journey. I use social media to share our journey. So for every time we get a new distributor or a new retailer, we celebrate it and say, oh, now we have a new distributor in so so and so city. And the more we did that, the more it grows our brand equity and the more and more people are looking at us and trusting us to do business with us. So every distributor that we have, every retailer that we have, majority, more than 50% of our customers are from social media. I love it because I'm a social media junkie. <laughs> and I love, you know, for years, people would say, oh, there's nothing good coming out of social media, but so That's many business. True. Yeah. It, you, and you prove it. And you're you're one of many who prove that. Now, how do we get this on Amazon in America or Jumia? Maybe it's already on Jumia um, where you're at. Um, what, what's the process? Because I hear a lot of entrepreneurs. I can already hear them. Ah, I'll be the only one selling it in the States or I'll be the only one selling it here. So how do we get it? Okay. Um, we have, first of all, we have a company website. That's www.phronesisfoods.ng. Um, we have all of our social media handles at Phronesis Foods. Whether it's Twitter, whether it's Instagram, whether it's Facebook, whether it's uh, LinkedIn, it's at Furnace Foods, it's the same name all around. And of course, we have direct customer service lines. Uh, you can reach us on WhatsApp, you can reach us via direct calls. And then of course, we have the distributor in Australia, we have the person in, uh, in London, in uh, Scotland, and then we have the person in, um, uh, what's it called, in the United States. Now, it's amazing, um, down here in Nigeria, you can get, um, you may not be able to get, you won't be able to get our products on Jumia. You can get in some of the retail stores in Abuja. We have stockists are also, we have um, uh, affiliates. So you can get from a uh, stockist in Enugu, from Abuja, from Anambra. Uh, but the easiest way, the easiest, easiest way is to get through us. That's why all of our internet channels are open 247 actually. So irrespective of your time zone, there's always someone on ground to attend to your orders or to your inquiries. Okay. Okay. No, you, you, I mean, you're definitely, you know, I, I love the, the system that you have laid out and I'm sure it came with a lot of trial and error. What prepared you to create such a distribution system or did you hire somebody who already was, you know, an expert in that? Um, uh, funny enough, we didn't hire people who were experts. We hired fresh graduates who literally have zero experience and they are learning on the job. Yes, they are learning on the job because other than just running business, sharing my story, I have some other young entrepreneurs who like to learn from me. So I, I saw it as an opportunity to mentor other than just employ. So every now and then I am teaching 
Uh, so, for instance, I say, you do this at the office, and I figure that, okay, because he has zero experience of how to do this, that's the only opportunity I have to teach him that. And all I needed to do is to teach him that once or twice or three times, and the next time he picks it up. Uh, the, I wanted to build a kind of company that, that would be a platform for lots of young people with literally zero experience to pass through. So we were not looking to hire people who were experts, except um, when we needed to, recently when we needed to put all of our books and numbers in order, and we required, um, uh, we required um, a financial expert, an accountant who is very good with that. It's also important that I mention that beyond the immediate team members that I have, we have board of advisors who are experienced in different areas, whose knowledge has helped our growth. I mean, there is, of course, um, there is Jane, who is well experienced in uh, corporate structure. The reason why we have all of these structures is because we have Jane on ground. And she's, in fact, that we even have part of our advisors as part of her idea. And of course, we have Emeka, who these people are running big businesses themselves. Emeka was the one that called me and said, see, um, retail is good. But if you want your money back immediately, you need to do wholesale. So initially we structured just the retail, but here is a mecca guiding us because he's running also retail and wholesale business. And then there is Yomi who was who had spent more than 12 years in the banking industry. He is constantly looking at our books. He is telling us, should we take this loan or should we not take this loan? Can our sales tell us um, be able to pay back this loan or the rest of that? And then, of course, amazingly, we have um, Lola Day, who had spent more than 15 years in another food processing company. So, oops, sorry. So every single thing um, with respect to new product development passed through her. She weighed it. She tells me, would it fly? Would it not fly? So something like that. So we have this team. Um, also, let me say that... Um, uh, one of the things that also is helping our growth is the strategy we are running with uh, the suppliers. We kicked it off beyond just buying products from them. We are taking, because the majority of them are women, so we're taking women empowerment programs uh, to them, financial inclusion uh, programs to them. Uh, we uh, have some sort of structure where we are partnering with uh, one NGO to you say, okay, take one child from this supplier, uh, from this woman to school, and we pay. So just some, some sort of way. Our business is small, but we have to be able to give back to the community, respective of the size that we are. Yeah. Well, you you messed up my my question. That's my signature question oh, to say, what is your I community? To, to, no, but I love it. I love it. But I, I, so I'll, I'll push you to I'd ask. I'd like that. you to ask your question again. That last one that I messed up, I'd like you to ask it again. No, you, 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 you did fine. And it's genuine. And that's the whole thing. Like things don't always, you know, have to be even asked perfectly. God knows I, I try my best, but <laughs> my question, you know, is about your community give back. So since you're talking about a community give back that you are already doing and I, a round of applause to you because so many people won't hire students without experience, but these people are brilliant, you know, Kid, these kids yeah. are brilliant and they keep us young and they keep us informed. But what is a community give back in the future that you would like to do? We want to take more children off the farm and into the school. Uh, because uh, from what we saw, majority of the people we have as contract staff in the rural communities have their kids employed as farmers instead of being in school, just so they could meet up with what to feed and what to wear and shelter and the rest of them. So we want to be able to, do, okay, so it's like a cycle. The more market we have or the more demand of our product that we have, the more we need these people. And the more we need them, the more we are able to give back to their community. So we want to be able to take more children off the farm and back to school. And we have a target. Currently, we have over 120 contract staff in these communities. Their processors, their selection process team, and the rest of them. We want to be able to increase that number to at least 3,000 to 4,000 by the end of 2023. No, that's that's a beautiful goal. And to think if 
you and a hundred other companies had that goal, the changes that would be made in, you know, not just Nigeria, but you, you're expanding already and other people can then hire and, and hire the, these young people. Cause so many people, you, you know, you can go to places and your cab driver can have a PhD and you say, mm-hmm. what, what happened? But if you weren't given a chance, is it his fault? I'm saying that, Chi Chi, for all the men, especially those in relationships, <laughs> who are trying to explain. I know. I went to school for this. It's not my fault. And they're just getting pounded and pounded. And you know, it's not easy um, with you know with the you ladies trying to explain. I I know I'm smart. Um, in the words of Nipsey Hussle, I just haven't had a chance to show it. So, I love that you're doing that. Is that because? you are in that still in that young phase and you might feel like you weren't always given a chance coming out of school. Uh, Yeah. I wasn't always given a chance, but a few times that I got it, I made the best use of it. It was a perfect opportunity for me to learn. Um, Even however, even before I left school, I knew deep down that I was, I was not going to do uh, a lot of nine to five. I had always had a dream of running something that has the capacity to employ more people other than me. Um, so yeah, and then I I look around. Um, I wouldn't just say there are a lot of women marginalization because I know that quite a number of organizations are already tackling that, but I would say that there is still quite a whole lot to do, which is why uh, about eighty percent of our workforce, whether full time or contract staff. I made up of women, either youths or women, elderly women, uh, widows, uh, including the ones that are not widows and the rest of that. The idea is just to get everyone moving and to let everyone know that uh, as long as they're alive, they matter. Man, say that again, because suicide is definitely on the rise um, globally, you know, pandemic, people losing jobs. I mean, just people... um, there's a funny, but it's not really funny story on the BBC, I believe it was. And they talked about how the Kenyan men were kill, killing themselves more. And people wow. ask why. And one of the men said in Swahili, he said, um, basically, he's like, well, our women won't listen to us and we can't beat them anymore. And I said that this is why you're killing yourself, right? We need wow. mental health services. And so we're, we're working on some things for mental health services. But you know, one, um, of that, sorry, sorry, oh, one of the things that, sorry, sorry, one of the things that, one of the things that I did with my team members is that other than the fact that they are young and literally inexperienced, fresh out of school, hasn't worked anywhere, uh, is that I give them power and I give them room to fail. Even when um, currently I am not in Lagos State, I traveled out of Lagos State, which is where I, I base or I reside and where companies located. I traveled there to the northern part of Nigeria to have meetings there, and I gave there are structures and things. Okay, so um, one of the things I, I did with my team members, um, this particular team on ground, is that when they resumed, considering the fact that they were coming to work with us with literally zero experience. I, I knew that I was going to do a lot of teaching. Um, I see a lot of young people who give up too quickly, very, very too quickly. Uh, they try this, it didn't work. They try this, it didn't work. Um, and then they think that nobody wants to listen, nobody wants to teach them. So I'm doing two things. Aside from the, aside the fact that I am particular about the, the, the young people or I'm particular about employing young people, I am constantly sharing our story of, of what we're doing well and what we're doing wrong on social media. So it's easier for anyone to relate because a lot of times we put entrepreneurs on the pedestal and we say, um, how did you make it? And people say, oh, it's by the grace of God. That's not an answer. People want to hear the process you walk through. People want to hear what you did. How did you fail? How did you pick up? How did you raise money? Be specific about it because when you give that book kind of answer, people don't pick up lessons. They don't pick up. I used to run a show on social media when I was a struggling entrepreneur. I used to run a show on Facebook Live called Let's Talk Entrepreneurship where I was bringing entrepreneurs who were doing better than me to come and share their story. People thought I was doing that for the listeners. I was doing it for myself, but I figured that, okay, since 
I need to learn a whole lot. Why don't we just make it a live show while every other person who is interested in learning could also learn? And so I give my team members power um, uh, to make decisions. Uh, and then I watch how they react. And then I say, this person, you are responsible for this. This should not go wrong. If you have to make an error, this is the minimal error you should make, but this is the highest result we're expecting. So you make room for them to not do well and make wider room for them to do well. And I see the reaction on their faces when they get it right. It's something you learned and added to their subconscious or to their mind and to their CV. It's, it's always amazing to watch. So I really wish that um, everyone listening to this, whether you're a younger, young entrepreneur or a bigger company, they could give more rooms to other young, other young people to learn, other than just making them an intern that is not being paid or whatever, really teach them, really bring them close and mentor them. Because if not, we're going to continue to have high case of mental breakdowns amongst the young people. Definitely. And you know, when you're talking about that, when people say, okay, thank God, great. You thank God. That is, you know, thank God for everything that you have. But mm -hmm. a lot of people have been trained and it's by Dale Carnegie that, you know, when they're talking, tell them what you're going to say, say it, then tell them what you've said. But a lot of speakers say absolutely nothing except nothing. this, not, no thing, nada, you know. Um, and so that's the, the breakdown. But because they said a lot of words, it sounds mm -hmm. smart to people who aren't maybe as informed or desperate for the knowledge. So I love mm -hmm. that you did break it down on how, you know, this happened and that happened. And of course, you guys, if you want the full details, you need to contact her and then bother her to write a book or make it a masterclass e-course. <laughs> oh, I have an audio. I have an e-book called How to Pitch Your Business which I wrote as a result of my plenty experiences of pitching my business to judges, to panelists, to this and to that and the rest of that. And it's quite an easy go to read book for any entrepreneur who is learning to sell him or herself or sell what they are doing. Yeah. And that book can be found on seller.co. If there's another website, maybe you're going to push it also to Amazon because I want to push you to push it on Amazon because Amazon <laughs> sells more books than anybody in the world and our books sell on there. And I love the royalties, but, you know, I, I'm going to push, push, push. Um, but you guys check out that book. What is the leave the people with some advice because I want them to check out your book. I want them to go check out your site. I want them, if they're a serious investor, to reach out to you. But what is that one encouraging piece of advice that you haven't said you could give to the audience? Consistency. You know, during my last birthday in on 25th of March, and a lot of people were writing all these beautiful things about me, there was one thing that was consistent with uh, there was one word that was that was that kept re 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 reappearing, and that was consistency. I've I had a, a lot of a lot of distractions a lot, a, a, along the way. People pushed a lot of things in my face. People wanted me to do this the way they wanted. They didn't want me to do Oprah business. I mean, at a point, even last year, we had an investor who walked into the company and um, said. Um, I'll give you whatever money you have. He wasn't being specific, but I want 51% of the company. That was crazy. That was one of the craziest offer I've had to get as an entrepreneur. And sometimes even when you hit a wall, it looks like you made the wrong decision by not taking that offer. But what I did that has helped me and I would tell anyone is, so long as you believe in what you're building and it has a lot of value, stay on that path. The community or the society is going to look at you like you're crazy, like they look at me like I was crazy. But everyone is proud of Chichi now. Everyone is proud because it's the same business that they thought that I was crazy doing that is making you hear me right now. So there's one thing I was going to leave you with, or I'm going to leave you with, is stay consistent on your path. People are going to try to advise you, take it with a pinch of salt. If it doesn't align with your dream, drop it. If it aligns with your dream, make sure that it aligns the values or whatever it is you know, it aligns with what you're building because once you shift focus, 
there is always someone somewhere waiting to pick up that thing that you dropped. That's what I discovered. So stay consistent on your part. When you hit a wall, go back to where you started from the beginning. Go back to all things you have done. If you haven't started, have a why set somewhere. If you come to my room, Colin, if you come to my house in my room, I have these uh, cardboard papers pasted on the wall. My brain works like two for seven. I could wake up at 2 a.m. and I'm writing something on the wall, yeah? Normal human beings are writing on a notepad, on a journal, stuff like that. But you're going to find blue, pink, green, white, cardboard papers or pasted on the wall of my room. All the product ideas are either popping up by 1 a.m. or by 3 a.m. and I'm standing up from the sleep to write them on the wall. It takes a lot of focus to do that. So consistency and focus. Once you have these two things, even when you're making mistakes, you always find your path back. I tell my Pete King, I don't get mad if you write on the wall. It's what you write and how you write on the wall. So I, 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 I get it. You can, you can, you can, <laughs> you can write and where, because you don't have to write on my wall. You know, right on your your wall. You do whatever. Okay, that's whatever. cool. Yeah, yeah. So I I love that. I love that you shared the game. You guys have gotten the game. I want you guys, if you do nothing else, to share this because it will change somebody's life. You'd be blessed, y'all.